Today we're going to be looking at DreamReport, the world's first programming-free, designer-friendly reporting solution for industrial and process automation. So what is DreamReport? So DreamReport is a designer-friendly reporting solution for the world we live in, industrial and process automation. It's designed specifically with open and direct connectivity in mind to all the types of systems that you would expect to be collecting and reporting data against. Those include uh, real-time connectivity into your SCADA systems, HMIs, PLCs, controllers, uh, direct connectivity into dedicated process historians, and direct connectivity into open databases such as SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, etc., My even Microsoft Access. It is a very easy to use uh, reporting tool, quick learning curve, a couple of days of training, if that, and you're up and running and building some pretty great looking reports. Uh, there is no programming or scripting environment, it truly is a configuration environment, so really no software development or programming skills are required to design these reports. It is a very scalable solution, certainly you're able to start uh, small, maybe a small HMI with a, a single uh, reporting uh, node on it, which is generating a couple of reports, to a large multi-node, multi-data source solution distributing reports to multiple users in different formats such as PDFs and Excel uh, spreadsheets, uh, maybe saving the data into a database, emailing the uh, reports automatically, printing to multiple printers, uh, viewing through a browser. So all of these are uh, available from a real small scale single node reporting solution to a large plant wide or multi plants reporting solution. So let's take a look at the methodology through which uh, Dream Report, uh, you know, how a project comes together and how the reports are generated. So first and foremost, you decide what uh, data source or data sources you'll be connecting to. And these can either be real time data sources such as PLCs, DCS systems, HMIs, anything that's generating real time data or data sources in which the data has already been historized. So it could be proprietary process historians, maybe proprietary binary files that uh, you know certain hardware is logging data into, or completely open databases. But the point here is that the data is already in a historical format. You then may choose to actually log the data. Uh, Dream Report comes with a built-in data logger, certainly not meant to replace a process historian, but certainly if you have any real-time data, such as from a PLC or an HMI that you need to report against, you would need to first uh, get the data logged into a database. So Dream Report has that capability built in, and you can come up with any logging schemes from on change, uh, when other data points change, record data, maybe on some uh, fixed interval, maybe every minute. So it's really up to you how you want to store your data uh, within Dream Report. Once you've taken care of that, then we get into the uh, report uh, design environment. And again, this is not a programming environment, but very much a, a graphical environment. It's almost akin to developing an HMI screen or a bunch of HMI screens is what it comes down to building reports in Dream Report. Once you've connected to your source of data uh, or data sources, uh, then it's a matter of choosing which graphical objects. Do you want tables? Do you want charts? Do you want uh, visual indicators? And essentially kind of compile uh, these reports together based on on graphical and tabular objects uh, that we make available to you. You then determine how you want the reports to be generated. Are they generated on, uh, on a schedule, time-based, uh, anything that daily, weekly, every shift, periodically, uh, it could be certain times of the day. Uh, the reports could be generated by command line, for instance, an HMI uh, firing off a command to generate a specific batch report with a specific batch ID. Uh, it could be event-based, monitoring something as simple as a bit in the PLC, maybe at the end of a batch, the bit goes high that says generate report. Or it could be an analog value, for instance, maybe you're monitoring run hours on a piece of equipment. And if you exceed that uh, run hours, Dream Report can look for that condition, let's say run hours greater than 1000, and then it detects that condition and then will generate, say, a maintenance uh, report based on that. And again, very rich reporting content. And then ultimately, how do you want the reports to get distributed and published? Well, it could be a, a native PDF or a secured PDF document, it could be a simple CSV file, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, maybe the output is straight to a web page uh, that a, view, a user can view the report through a web interface. And then, uh, do you want the reports to be saved into one or more directories? Do you want them to be FTP'd up to an FTP site? Should the reports get emailed to one or more users? And maybe just 
have the reports a hard copy printed to uh, uh, one or more printers. And again, these are all checkbox options within Dream Report. So the development environment, again, is very much a, a checkbox configuration driven environment. We call this the Dream Report Studio. And uh, it kind of has the look and feel of a Microsoft Office, any modern generation Microsoft Office product with uh, what we call the ribbon bar across the top with different uh, functionality, and then graphical and uh, configuration objects down the side. Uh, all of the uh, objects that you'll be displaying on a report, whether they're single value calculations, uh, tabular results, step tables, you know, showing daily data for a month, those kind of things, these are all built-in uh, objects and all the calculations are built in statistical functions. So if you want, for instance, average 15 minute averages, that would be a checkbox. I want an average, the step period is 15 minutes. Or I want to get an uptime and a downtime and a percentage availability for a piece of equipment or a bunch of, uh, let's say, uh, motors on a line over the course of a shift. Again, those would all be checkboxes. So again, no programming, no SQL scripts required. If you really do want to or do need to run a SQL command, for instance, maybe you have a stored procedure, we do have a SQL object which facilitates that. But on the whole, most reports will be completely SQL free from the user perspective. And again, for those of you not familiar with SQL, SQL is the traditional way that you write queries against databases to build reports. And it really takes a different skill set uh, to do that. And we've really tried to abstract as much of, of that as possible from the user of Dream Report. And the development environment is very template-based, a lot of reusability in terms of objects, creating new report, blank reports, applying a template to get a basic page format, or even a complete starting point of a report from which you can then modify and um, uh, make your own. And the kind of objects we have available, you know, charts, bar charts, pie charts, line charts, tables, statistical tables, uh, different graphical widgets, indicators, meters, etc. And any kind of uh, pictures, backgrounds you might want to include in your reports. That's the develop environment. The runtime environment uh, is an, a service which runs as part of Dream Report and its job is to make sure that uh, the reports are generated at whatever schedule you've defined for each report as well as monitoring for any external triggers as I mentioned earlier on what might uh, trigger a report. Uh, so that's kind of the uh, unmanned or auto generation of reports. We also have a dynamic report generator that is available as a standalone utility or as an ActiveX control that you can embed in your HMI. And a user can generate or regenerate a report on the fly. They can pick through any of their reports to choose which one they want. And then there's also a web portal, a very nice uh, web portal which comes with Dream Report which organizes all your reports for you, uh, however you've configured them, whatever folder structure that will immediately be built for you on the web portal. It will then also uh, allow you to interact with the reports, to uh, view existing reports, to generate new reports with different time ranges. So a very uh, user-friendly and programming-free development, uh, excuse me, a web environment that really does not require any web development skills at all. So, just a few other uh, points to bring up about the web portal. It is a secured environment if you choose to enable security, both in terms of uh, Windows authentication or internal authentication. You have control per user down to the individual report, which report or reports that user can or cannot see. Language switching on the fly to um, one of, I believe, 11 languages we currently support. Uh, both on internet and intranet environments, uh, supported by all common web browsers, and also is mobile device aware, Android, iOS, uh, Microsoft Windows Mobile, uh, Dream Report Web uh, detects the uh, request is coming from a mobile device and completely reconfigures the web portal automatically to be more um, appropriate or applicable on a mobile device such as a tablet or even a, a smartphone. And the reports don't necessarily have to be static. Users uh, can interact with them, pick different tags, uh, uh, different batch IDs they might want to report on, change different date ranges, and refresh the reports automatically through the web portal. So, a couple of examples here, both the uh, reports being shown in a, uh, a web page as it, through a browser, and the exact same report available through a smartphone here, in this case. A lot of new features and enhancements in the 4, uh, 4x version of Dream Report. 
Uh, so many that I just said, wow, let's, let's not talk about every one of them uh, over here. But really specifically, uh, let's move on uh, to the next section here, to the, the features that are really significant in terms of usability and accessibility data communication uh, functionality that was included in the 4X version of Dream Report. In this slide, we're going to talk specifically which are which features are significant to us uh, as Wonderware users of Dream Report integration with the Wonderware in, invents as Wonderware products. Um, we can really categorize these into two sections: real-time data sources and historical sources. The real-time data sources, starting on the left side of the uh, the circle here, uh, are in touch. Dream Report can talk natively to any InTouch application, either locally on the same machine as the Dream Report engine or uh, any remote InTouch node. We use native suite link communication, so it supports tag browsing, very easy to pick which tags you want to uh, report against, which tags you want to log in Dream Report, and even which tags you might want to browse or, or monitor in InTouch, which will then be your trigger for your reports in Dream Report. Uh, native connector using the message exchange uh, technology or, or uh, communication protocol into application server, direct browsing into your app server galaxy, being able to pick any data point or attribute in app server, uh, log it and report against it. And then again through SuiteLink or uh, OPC communication, any of the Wonderware data acquisition servers. In terms of historical data, uh, Let's actually start with Wonderware Historian. Probably the majority of Dream Report users, for at least in the Wonderware uh, side of things, are Wonderware Historian users that are using Dream Report as a very easy to use feature rich reporting tool. It's not an analytic tool such as Wonderware Historian Client, which is definitely more kind of a interactive slice and dice the data, but more somebody needs a very specific report, specifically formatted report, either for regulatory reasons or internal batch reporting or whatever it is. A Dream Report really is the go-to tool for developing those reports. Um, InTouch historical log file. These LGH files or historical log files which have been around almost since the beginning of, of time with Wonderware. Uh, these are the internal proprietary log files for InTouch which feed InTouch historical trends. Dream Report has a native driver that can view and browse data directly out of the uh, historical log files and create very nice reports directly against those LGH files. We also have the ability to periodically take that data and archive it into an open SQL database just for long-term storage as well. So a lot of features available there. We have a native uh, connector or, or driver for the Wonderware Alarm Logger database. So many of our uh, customers are using Wonderware Alarm Logger either with App Server or InTouch to record uh, all their alarms and events into a SQL database. But most people don't know what to do with that data once it's in that database, other than to maybe feed their alarm grid in their HMI. Dream Report makes it very easy to uh, connect up to that database without writing any SQL queries, and then interact with the database, uh, choose which, uh, excuse me, the, the, the alarm tables, choose which fields they want, the alarm time, the alarm duration, the acknowledge time, uh, who the operator was, etc., and make some very uh, interesting alarm and event reports, maybe with Pareto charts, uh, data grids, anything like that. And then the, one of the newest drivers we have in for the Wonderware products are uh, IntelliTrack, the Wonderware IntelliTrack communication driver. And this allows direct communication into the IntelliTrack database. And IntelliTrack is the, uh, Inventus's mobile solution for data collection. Uh, let's say field technicians, operators making rounds, collecting data, uh, maybe pump inspections or uh, just visual inspections on equipment. Dream Report uh, can understand the database structure of the IntelliTrack database and make it very easy to create uh, rich reports against the IntelliTrack collected data. Beyond that, um, really in performance enhancements, uh, underlying technology, the database, has, uh, has, the performance has been greatly uh, increased in terms of being able to handle a decent amount of data throughput. Uh, in terms of retrieving data out of Wonderware Historian, we expose all of the Historian retrieval modes. So we take full advantage of the very fast retrieval engine of Historian to make your reporting against Historian so much faster and more efficient. And 
two new features, uh, significant features, are the manual values editor, which we'll talk a little bit more about later on, which enables manual data collection of data points. So maybe an operator has to take some lab samples, uh, record those values, store it, and then include those manual samples along with all their automatically collected data in the same report, for instance. And then web elements. When making interactive web reports, we have a set of um, very easy to use elements such as tag lists and pick lists, and batch IDs, um, buttons to generate a report, button to save as a PDF, uh, hyperlinks to link reports together and pass parameters between reports. So again, all very intuitive, uh, non-programming little elements which really make your reporting applications uh, really come to life. So here is a quick screen capture of what uh, the current uh, the design studio looks like. Again, very well laid out and uh, nicely organized. The communication drivers, you'll see here a little link um, as I expand. This is just a subset. Currently we're up to about, I think, 64 communication drivers um, for Wonderware, open communication protocols, and other native communication drivers as well. And we're going to get into some of these in more detail shortly. The Direct Wonderware Historian driver provides native connection into Wonderware Historian, either locally or on any remote uh, machine. Uh, enables all of the historian's retrieval modes, which really allows Dream Report to take full advantage of the full um, of the fast data retrieval and pre-processing of data, which historian can do. For instance, if you did need to do uh, hourly integrals on a flow meter, certainly Dream Report could do it internally. But if we use, for instance, the integral retrieval mode from historian at one hour intervals, you're going to be able to extreme. Uh, extract data very quickly, large amounts of data very quickly, and return it from Historian into Dream Report for reporting. So this is what it looks like when you set up the, uh, your co configuration to the Historian. You pretty much tell it where the Historian resides, test your connection with your credentials, and then pick what retrieval mode you're going to use and any additional parameters that that retrieval, might, retrieval mode might need. In terms of going natively to InTouch, uh, in or actually real-time data sources from Wonderware, whether it's native to InTouch, application server, or directly to a PLC, even without the HMI, we have certain uh, several options available to us. If we're using native InTouch communication, we have the SweetLink driver, which then expose the entire InTouch app's uh, tag name dictionary to Dream Report to pick which tags you want to log and report against. If you're going to any OPC server, whether it's uh, a Wonderware uh, DA server or third-party OPC server, we can browse for them, connect up, and we support OPC DA, alarms and events, and HDA, historical data access uh, OPC servers as well. Regarding application server, we have this native message exchange driver, which allows connection into the G Galaxy repository, or the GR. You can browse for any objects in either a flat or a hierarchical structure and then gets these real-time values directly out of App Server. So simply point to where your Galaxy repository is, choose your GR, put in your credentials, and then just tell Dream Report how you intend to browse uh, the data points from within the, G the Galaxy. The IntelliTrack IntelliTra driver um, gives us direct connection into the database, it builds us our device tree of uh, every device. It's uh, uh, the rounds or, or data collection points that have been defined for those uh, devices and then enables the user to browse the historical values in this database and really report on any data collection point from IntelliTrack. It might be something as simple as, uh, you know, was the tank clean, yes or no, an answer like that, to an analog value or a multi, uh, you know, a multi uh, selection uh, of any point that an operator or a, a technician has recorded in their doing when they're doing their, their rounds with IntelliTrack. So again, just point to the IntelliTrack database, uh, log in with your valid credentials, and then when you browse for items to report against, it exposes the, into all your, uh, your, your bases, your rounds, and then any data collection points within each of these, uh, uh, what we call rounds in IntelliTrack. The Wonder Alarms driver, direct connection into any uh, local or remote alarm database. And as I mentioned earlier, on the ability to display all available properties of your Wonderware alarm and events. 
and uh, you can pre-create or uh, multiple or pre-configure I should say multiple alarm filters which allow you later on then to just say I want only high priority alarms or I only want uh, packaging line alarms or only high priority packaging al line alarms and it's very easy to create these different filters uh, as you'll see here we uh, give various filter options so you can filter by alarm group or duration or area or operator and then create a, a logical expression here which defines what that um, alarm filter condition will be. In this case we're looking at an alarm area or alarm group being like oven. So anything from a curing oven, anything with the word oven in the alarm group will then get filtered when a user checks that option later on when configuring a report. Not too much to talk about under the InTouch historical log file. Simply point to the directory where the, the files reside and Dream Report will allow you to report against any of the data points inside of those historical log files. Dream Reports has a very nice interface to allow for batch-based reporting. And this has so often been a, a challenge for users who have data either in a proprietary database, uh, a process historian, who need some way to associate a batch ID or a, some unit of production with a start and an end time. And so we call these batch reports, but really if you, this was say a, a paper conversion process, these might be roll IDs. If it's a job shop, it might be a job ID or a work, work, work order number. Uh, but essentially what we need to do is associate a start and end time, which is going to be variable, with some unit of production. Dream Report has a batch definition interface which allows you to go and tell it uh, to tell Dream Report which tag is your batch ID or your, your job ID or lot roll number, whatever tag you're looking at. This can either be internal to Dream Report or from, say, an external historian. Um, it can also come from an external database. You might have some external system, maybe an ERP system or a batch product, which is recording a batch ID, a start time, and an end time. And Dream Report will actually allow you to browse into that database and you simply tell it which table has your batch information, which field has your batch ID, which field has your start time, which field has your end time. And from then on, all lookups will be provided in Dream Report based on Dream Report searching that database and providing uh, batch IDs against which you're going to report. And behind the scenes, it will then extract the appropriate start and end time associated with each of those batches that are selected. There's also some, some very nice functional, let's call them uh, industry or, or task uh, specific functional modules. Uh, for example, here we have something called a set point analysis, which is very applicable, say, in heat treat uh, type processes or maybe in reactions where you have specific conditions that you're looking for in which you consider your process to be stable. Maybe it's a specific temperature, plus minus so many degrees. You're looking at rates of change ramping up, coming out of that condition. How long were you in that condition? So all of these are really just checkbox options and associated graphical objects with which you can create a report. For instance, in this case, say a heat treat report, where we're looking at what our targets are, um, which thermocouples we're monitoring. We get into the target range up here. Did we pass or fail this test? So that, again, that to build something like this does not take a, a large effort because this functionality is built into the product. For those of you in regulated environments, specifically, uh, you know, 21 CFR Part 11, those in the pharmaceutical industry especially, understand the importance for uh, being able to lock down an application for version control to keep track of uh, what changed and when it changed and who changed it. Dream Report is Part 11 ready. Okay, so we have uh, integrated uh, security, uh, Windows security management, uh, who can design reports, who can modify reports, who can open or generate reports, um, complete version control every time a change is made to the configuration of a report, that report will have to be checked in with an operator comment if you choose to enable that. You have the ability to track these changes and then roll back or roll forward to any specific report version uh, that might be uh, required. And then the runtime engine can run as a service and really no one can stop or start it manually. It's, it's completely locked down behind the scenes. And again, this is very significant in our world. Uh, it would take a pretty significant engineering effort in any open uh, or, or generic reporting tool set to actually implement this kind of functionality. And again, it's designed for users like yourselves who might be using it in a 
say, a, a validated pharmaceutical environment. So again, here, both uh, user or group uh, user controls, group controls who can get into which functionality within Dream Report, down to which individual reports people have access to. Dream Report can run in a redundant pair or hot backup mode, uh, giving you much higher availability for your reporting. Either two individual reporting nodes, maybe both logging data into a central database, uh, or two completely self-contained Dream Report nodes, each one with its own logging database, if, you, if in fact you're using Dream Report to log data, and then keeping each other in sync uh, on some fixed interval that you define. And it's really transparent to the user where the reports ultimately are coming from. There is a project generator wizard that gets you up and running very quickly with Dream Report. Simple 20 clicks or so wizard, it really asks you everything to what products or what uh, data sources are you communicating with, how do you want to collect the data, do you want to record the data on some frequency, uh, when do you want your report to be generated, do you want to summarize your data, do you want to put a chart in there, and it really gets you really way ahead on the curve getting started by using this project generator wizard. Um, so a good way to start off a project in Dream Report. Another, I call this a productivity tool in Dream Report, is the ability to create what we call virtual report instances. And once you've defined a report, you might find that you will need to reuse that report maybe on different production lines or different processes. Uh, the processes might be the same, but maybe each process is being fed by a different PLC, the tag names might be different. Or maybe it's a systems integrator that's using one HMI vendor's product in one project in a, say, water wastewater treatment report. Same state report is required on the next job, but that company is using, or that water authority is using a different vendor's HMI. It's also very easy to switch completely, uh, switch sources of data as well as just individual tags uh, which feed your report. If you need to make wholesale or global changes to the report, all you do it at the report at the make the change at the report template level and then those changes are propagated down to the individual instances. The instances can run on different schedules, they can have different trigger points so as well so it's just a nice way to manage and configure a kind of a, a global report or a, 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 a template report and then just change tags or data sources per report and again preserving a lot of engineering time. So in wrapping up here, who can use Dream Report? As Wonderware users, really, there's every, there's, there really isn't a Wonderware user who could not benefit from Dream Report. So I guess we'll say that in a positive sense, everyone can benefit from using Dream Report, from standalone in-touch apps, you know, small single-node in-touch apps to large historian, even with the tiered historians, multiple sources of data. Uh, application server, and then any of the functional modules such as energy management, performance and operations, um, MES certainly can benefit from Dream Report. Systems integrators, you know, big thing with SI is being able to develop something once and reuse different HMIs, as I mentioned earlier on, no problem. The virtual report instances can really facilitate the switching of data sources very nicely and still use the same set of reports. OEMs, machine builders, can uh, deliver a set of reports with their equipment. They can lock those uh, reports down and so no one can actually modify them. Or they can give the end user the ability to maybe create their own reports or take a copy of their reports and modify from there. So again, something that is a standard set of reports that can be included with every piece of equipment that gets shipped from an OEM. And then once you're in and within a facility or a company, engineers, quality techs, uh, IT folks, and really anyone needing to quickly develop great looking reports but without any SQL knowledge. This is not a requirement. Uh, you do not need to be a SQL programmer to use Dream Report. So again, from small projects, you might have a, uh, you know, an HMI or even not an HMI, just a maybe a little panel and a PLC out there. Uh, very easily available, uh, able to hook up to those sources of data, start collecting and logging the data, and then generating reports against them. To large multi-plant, multi-data source implementations where complex reporting is required across multiple systems, and again, Dream Report is, is really the glue which brings all of this together very nicely um, without having to build any complex SQL relationships between these data sources, you can include data from any source on a single report with very minimal uh, effort.
So where is Kareem Report being used from a, uh, let's talk about a, a Wonderware products portfolio. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, probably, I'm going to say around over 60% of um, our licenses being used in the Wonderware community are against Wonderware Historian, just because it is such an easy to use and powerful reporting tool against a very powerful data repository, which is uh, Wonderware Historian. It's also very commonly used uh, on, I hate to use the word lower end, but smaller implementations, maybe standalone in-touch applications, which are not part of a system platform implementation. There is no historian, so Dream Report can take care of both collecting the data from the HMI as well as logging it and then generating reports. Also commonly used, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, in the one for any Wonderware alarms uh, in really any application, both in touch or application server, feeding alarms into the alarm database. And then um, as a data logger for third party products, you know, you get to a plant, maybe the plant is primarily Wonderware, but there might be some OEM equipment or an exist uh, from another HMI vendor or a, an existing historian somewhere else in the facility. Chances are Wonderware, uh, excuse me, Dream Report has a native communication driver for these external systems that they can use um, to get data from them and then bring it all together in your reporting application. And then there really is, from internally from our perspective, a heavy focus uh, on using Dream Report as a reporting layer for the Wonderware MES products, that's the operations and performance, as well as a reporting layer for Wonderware IntelliTrack. These are two areas that require a pretty significant skill set to create your own or modify the existing uh, reports that are provided either through the proprietary web reports with IntelliTrack or with SQL Server reporting services with the Wonderware MES. And uh, we've seen this as an opportunity to really simplify uh, the reporting effort needed to build very custom or user-specific reports uh, against these products. And obviously, Dream Report is the obvious choice for this, uh, this effort. So thank you. Uh, at this point, we're done with the overview presentation of what Dream Report's all about, and specifically here, uh, Dream Report in the Wonderware environment. What we're going to do now is actually look at a Dream Report in action. We'll actually look at what it takes to get Dream Report connecting up to Wonderware products and then see what we can do to put together, say, some batch reports or uh, historical reports, time based reports. So, what we're going to do here is I've actually started up a little uh, project I've called my Reactor Project. And in it, I'm going to be connecting to a few data sources uh, and generate some reports or create and generate some reports against those uh, data sources. So what we have in the background here is the um, legendary Wonderware uh, Reactor demo, which uh, has some extra features added to it. Um, but essentially, this is the same Reactor demo that's been around, uh, included in the product for years and years. And it has a bunch of analog and discrete data. So what we're going to do is use Dream Report to report against this. We also have Wonderware Historian running in the background, collecting uh, this data plus a bunch of other data, simulation data, some data from application server. And so we will be using Dream Report to uh, report data against our Wonderware Historian. And in the background, I also have the Wonderware Alarm Logger Manager running, collecting all our alarms and events from InTouch and from Application Server. That's the wrong one. And here we have the Alarm Database Manager running in the background, catching any alarms and events and logging them into the Alarm Database. So, let's get into our Dream Report Studio. This is our design studio that I showed a screen capture of earlier on. And what we're going to do now is come in here and first and foremost look at our communication drivers. What are we going to communicate with? So I click on my communication driver icon and this project or this uh, installation happens to have every one of the communication drivers that we provide with uh, Dream Report. Uh, certainly uh, there's a lot to talk about here but our focus is on using Dream Report for Wonderware. So what we'll do here is click on the Wonderware communication drivers and up comes our list of drivers for Wonderware. So for instance, if we wanted to get data out of Wonderware Historian at 15 minute averages, uh, we could certainly bring all the data out of Historian into Dream Report and have Dream Report do the calculations or I can just create a communication driver or, or configure a communication driver, we'll call this Wonderware Hist and I'll just give it a logical name, maybe 15 
uh, minute average. So to configure it, I browse to wherever my historian is. I log in with my user credentials, test my connection. What retrieval mode do I want to use? Cyclic, delta, min, max, averages. So let's say we're doing 15 minute averages, so I'll choose an average retrieval mode. And now it wants the resolution in milliseconds. So if we do the math, that will be nine, 15 minutes is 900 seconds, and in milliseconds, so that's 900,000 milliseconds. I say OK, add it in, and we're good to go. So whenever I need to build a, a report or a table with 15 minute averages from Historian, I just point to this communication driver. If I was getting data out of my InTouch application, I could use over here the SweetLink protocol, and let's just call this uh, Wonderware InTouch. I could click on Configure. Simply browse to wherever my InTouch application resides. And here's my Reactor application. And it browses through and sees the whole tag name dictionary. If this InTouch application resided on a remote machine, I would all I'd do is put in the PC name or the IP address of that machine, and Dream Report will use SweetLink over the network to communicate with um, that InTouch node. Okay, and I could add it in. I already have one here for InTouch, so I won't recreate that. InTouch historical log files simply just point to where the LGH files are, which I have. Uh, let's see if I open up my Windows Explorer. I believe I have my InTouch app logging data into a, a directory over here. So here's the current historical log file being populated from InTouch. And let's take a look at one more, uh, our Wonderware Alarm and Event database. What you would do here is just call it Wonderware Alarms. And to configure that, we would come in here, tell it where the database was, connect in with our credentials. If the database name is something other than www.alarmdb, we could change that. Test our connection, and then create filters. So maybe I want to create a filter called high uh, priority, let's call it high priority reactor alarms. So to do that, I could do something like where property or the area, it says my alarm group, text equals reactor. I now have an alarm group called reactor. Actually, let's add that filter first. So we will say any tag name which has its area equals reactor and its priority, let's say, is less than or equal to 10. So we could say over here less than or less than or equal to 10. Add that condition in. And now later on, I could select this um, this this filter when I'm putting my alarm grid on the screen and it would immediately filter any data, any alarms and events that met this criteria over whatever time period I was choosing. So that's how we would go about creating communication drivers to any one of these um, data sources, one word data sources. The next thing we need to do is if the data is not already being logged, for instance in one word historian, the Logger Studio will allow us to create any kind of logging group and log data uh, into an internal SQL or Access or Oracle or MySQL database. It's really up to you what you want to or how you want to log the data, where you want to log the data. So in here I'm going to call this, let's just call this uh, reactor tags. The group is going to be my in-touch real-time tag that I defined under my driver configuration. And then simply browse around, decide which tags we want to record. Maybe I need uh, those tags there. I'd also like to get my transfer pump and transfer valve, maybe my water valve, and um, some set point tag. Add them in. How do I want to record these? On change, on some periodic frequency, when some other tag changes. Maybe it's a phase change within a process. Every time there's a phase change, we want to uh, record a set of tags. That's how you would do it here. So let's say in my InTouch app here, I have a batch step. Every time there's a step change, I want to record these data points. So I could come in here and say, browse for that tag, which is called uh, step one. And whenever step one changes, I want to record the data, except on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> so you can create a, um, a schedule based on times of the week, based on certain recording conditions or data change. In this case, even something like only recorded when our value, our step one, 
So we want to capture it on step change and step 1 and step 9 and 10 are really are meaningless for us for our data recording so we could say the log values from step 1 um, enable that uh, whenever it goes from let's say from step 2 to step uh, 8 for instance and that's how you would set up your range uh, that you want to record against and actually in this case let's just do a chain recording on change and we can start monitoring these points and this is looking at real-time data now from for instance our in touch application when I run the project or reload the project these points will then get added to our internal database and will get logged so but on the whole if you're using it against Wanderer Historian or the Wanderer Alarm database you don't need dream report to log any data for you now we get into building our reports so let's go into our report designer studio and start building some basic reports. In this case, let's say I'd like to get data for the last hour on 15 minute intervals, the last few hours on 15 minute intervals against Historian. Well, one way to do it would be to use our retrieval mode, the Historian 15 minute average retrieval, or um, if it's tags that were maybe we didn't have it, that retrieval mode, uh, such as maybe data long from InTouch, Dream Report can do those what we call step retrieval of data, step data. So I'll create a new report and we'll just call this uh, historian historian report. Uh, we can tell it uh, how many reports to keep, the report file format, dynamically build up a name every time it gets generated. This report might be a daily report that happens every day at midnight. Um, or it could be triggered by some event uh, in the PLC or the HMI. And the format, let's say I want to do a PDF document. Um, I don't need it secured, it's just a standard PDF. I would like a copy of this to be sent to my Canon printer and for Canon is offline, send a copy over to uh, this Lexmark over here. And uh, open it up as a PDF. And away we go, we get a blank slate. Now we can start building our report. So let's say that this is always going to be the last two hours and 15 minute intervals. We would put on here, for instance, the step table. Drag and drop it. We could then choose which tags we want to look at. Let's say three, I'll just use a couple of tags here, so maybe three columns. Uh, is it going to be batch based? No, this will be fixed always for the last two hours. And I want to step this in 15 minute steps. So it'll be 15 minute intervals. Then we can come in here and give it a name. We'll say 15 uh, minute averages. And maybe the first column we'll call timestamp. And this will be our step start time. And we want it uh, custom format, date and time, just a date, just a time. Let's use uh, that format in, 20, in AM PM. Column two, I'm just going to call, I have two tags here. Let's, let's choose our reactor uh, level. Actually, we'll just make it simpler. We'll call this uh, reactor 15 minute averages and we'll call this field over here level. And we'll give this one a caption of temperature. And let's go tell it which what data we want. So now we want to do what's called step data. And this is going to be our level. I can go browse now to my external history server, which is going to be my Wonderware historian. And I can browse my historian. Let me do a quick search for level tags and see if we find any. Yeah, we have our reactor level here. And we don't want the last value, but over each 15 minute step, we want to show the min, the max, the average, the integral. Well, this will be an average because that's what we want on this report. And result representation, I'd like to show it with a, uh, let's say that's going to be in gallons and with one decimal place. And we can do some additional uh, display formatting. I'll say if my average um, was below, let's say, zero to 300 gallons. I'd like to display text here that says, uh, we'll leave the text as is, but we will maybe change the font to be red. And we'll add that in. Okay. 
So there we have our level and real quick we'll just repeat that. Um, step data, this one we'll do for temperature, give it a name. This one again is our reactor temperature and I'll get rid of the advanced options for that one. Okay. Do we want to put a footer which summarizes the min, the max, the average of each 15 minute period? Certainly we could go in and start adding different lines uh, under our footer. But for uh, just for time here, we'll leave it as is. We'll put some table formatting, uh, bold. Let's put some headers in bold and away we go. So there we have a simple little table which shows us some our timestamp, our level, and our temperature over the last two hours. Uh, maybe over here we'll just put our report name, and I don't have to type in the report name, I can just put a what we call a dynamic uh, text object, put the report name there, we'll make it bold, and give it a big font size. And then maybe we'll put on here um, a quick chart. And without too much formatting, let's go in here and choose our reactor level over the last two hours. We'll call that level. We'll add that line. And we'll do our temperature, which will be our react temperature. And add that line. Temp, we'll do that in green. And we'll leave all other settings uh, as is for now. Display a legend, sure, and here we go. And the last thing, let's see if there were any alarms and events in our reactor over this time period. All I would do here is come down to our alarm and event table and drop it in over here. This is going to come from an external history source, which in this case is our in-touch alarms. If I have any filters set up, they will get exposed here. I want to look at my reactors and I'll say OK. And then we'll use the same time period, the last two hours and appearance. Let's say um, alarms, let's call this reactor alarms. And what fields do we want to look at? Uh, let's say the start time, uh, maybe what the alarm text was, the priority, duration, and that's pretty much all we need, I think, for now. Uh, operator node, let's say the tag name, and what the, what the value was, then we went into alarm. And here we go. We can also do additional formatting, such as you know any high priority alarms. So, for instance, under appearance, we could say um, if the priority was between zero and three, uh, zero and three, we want to change this red as well. So we could then just simply come in here and change it red, and even make it bold and add it in under that condition. All right. So we have. Some more formatting. Let's take a look at this report uh, when we run it. So let's do a little bit of formatting here so we can fit some of these things in. Uh, priority, duration, tag name, and value. And that should be good. Okay, so now that we've created our report, uh, let's go ahead and load it into our project. So now We'll save our configuration and the project has is, is been running in the background. And, but let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, we don't have to wait every two hours or midnight for this report to run. We can actually generate it on the fly. So let's uh, wait for this to go live and then we'll see what we get in our report. So this is in touch again. I can acknowledge alarms. I can cause alarms. So any of this is happening. Of course, we're doing it for the last two hours. So um, see what happened before. So I want to test this report. I called it my historian report and I can say generate. And now it's going out to my historian, extracting the data. And there we have for the last two hours from starting at two to the last 15 minute period was 3.45 to four o'clock. Here's our average levels. None of our averages went below 300, so that's good. 
uh, our chart or our trend over that time period and then any alarms and events that occurred during that period and again we said anything with a priority of three or less showed in red in bold and there we have obviously a lot of alarms happening over that two hour period so really in about 10 minutes I built uh, a report which might not be the fanciest report in the world but uh, certainly a lot of good information extracted very quickly out of Historian and generated a pretty feature rich or content rich report. We'll do one more or actually two more but I won't build them from scratch I'll go into ones I've already built. Uh, we have a bunch of valves and pumps and motor statuses in here. Maybe you want to see how your valves are being utilized or your pumps. How many times they're stopping and starting and how long were they open and closed. So we can do something here called an automatic statistic table which pretty much allows you to choose any set of tags and come up with a bunch of statistics for them. So in this case I went and browsed simply by coming in here and I just put in percent valve and I found all my valve tags and added them in. And then what statistics did I want to look at? For these tags I want to look at the on counter, the off counter, the running time, the down time, and maybe even the availability. What percentage of each of the last two hours were those valves open or closed? So we could do something like that. The last two hours, um, give it a caption, put some names and headings in here, and pretty much we come up with a little summary report uh, which will summarize all of our machine status. Really, it's a rudimentary up and down time tracking. We could also put in here a bar chart, which I want to look at in this case the same set of tags. And I want, I want to do is for each bar, uh, so this is going to be for the last two hours, I would like to, for each bar, I would like to look at the total number of on transitions for each of these. So we could, any of those statistics we could look at. So I want to see how many times these valves were opened. Uh, for the last hour and I would like to show it in a Pareto so we can see which are which valves are being opened the, the most. So that's really what it took to do that. And then over here I put a, a little uh, graphic but then I might want to show current value. So for instance I could take what we call a single value object, a single data object, drop it on the screen and over here I'm going out maybe directly into InTouch. So I'm going to browse to my InTouch real-time data source and get my mixer tag and I want to show its current value so the moment this report is run I want to know if that mixer was running or, or, or stopped and then for the result representation we can change color we can um, you know if it's zero to zero make sure it shows the text that says stopped and if it's uh, mixing show it text mixing so that's what we've done here and looking at this report in runtime I will go ahead and generate it from here and the last two hours I'm using the same time period and here we have each of these how many times the concentrate valve was opened how many times it was closed total time open total time closed in the last two hours likewise for the others then we have over here a quick Pareto analysis of which ones were opened um, or actually the open number of open transitions in the last two hours and currently this bioreactor is the, is the mixer stopped if I go in here it is certainly stopped and I could put this in in manual mode and started and if I were to regenerate this report right now we should see it indicate the current status of that mixer which is mixing so very nice to maybe you want to include environmental conditions in your plant when this report ran your know, relative humidity temperature what your product was being run at that moment and then the last thing to show you within Dream Report for now, there's a lot more we can talk about, but within here are batch based reporting. Our batch definition allows us to go out and browse to any tag either within Historian or InTouch. So in this case, I have a tag in InTouch called Batch String. And that's this tag over here telling me which batch I'm running. And Dream Report is keeping track of whenever these batches start and end and keeping track of the start and end times. With that in mind, what we can do is, in any report, instead of picking, say, a time period, the last two hours, yesterday, whatever date, time period, what we can do for any object, whether it's a trend or a statistic or a, a raw data table, when we go and select our date range, what we get here, instead of choosing time-based, such as the last one hour or two hours, we choose batch-based, and simply just pick, pick the batch ID. 
and then whatever else you want um, to include. Uh, for instance, my batch statistics for the last batch that ran, I'd like to get the min, max, average, and standard deviation for these three tags. Again, I do an automatic statistic table, pick these statistics, but again, use the batch ID, okay, for for this, uh, excuse me, the, the batch definition instead of a time definition. And I could use it really for any object on the screen. So in this case, I'd like to get some statistics. Uh, my tank levels at the batch end, all I do is I say over the batch duration, get me the current value, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the most recent, uh, the, the level at the end of that batch. Trend, raw data, and then batch alarms. This is using the alarm and event table I showed you earlier on, but in this case, instead of choosing the last two hours, again, I chose batch based. All right, now the other thing about this report, instead of generating it manually or on time, some time period, what I've done here is come in to the generate on event and chosen a real-time data point. So in my InTouch application, I have a tag that says run report, which is in here somewhere. When that bit goes high, Dream Report will monitor that for when it equals one, and then it'll, after a two second delay, just to make sure our data has been logged, Dream Report is going to generate that report for us. So I'm going to turn on my auto uh, batch, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new batch. Count to two, and we should see a report pop up shortly. And here it is, just ended at 4.27.07, which is exactly when it ended. And here is our batch that we were just making antifreeze. Alex was the operator. Uh, when it started at 4.17, it ended at 4.27. Here is our trend over the duration of that batch. Our tank levels when that batch ended. Um, what percentage concentration was the set point in that batch. Uh, the raw data over the duration of the batch. And then any alarms and events that occurred in the running of that batch. So again, very easy. And so that was the last batch number B234229. My guess is the current batch is going to be 230, which it is. So that's the incremented next batch. All right. So the last thing to look at then is um, how else to generate these reports. We've looked at the auto generation. We've looked at using the dynamic report generator. We have also a web browser. So let's go in and fire up our web browser. And uh, let's go down here and bring up Dream Report Web. And what it does for us is organizes all of our reports. I had just created that new historian report. It showed up here, and I can go and look at my last run report. Uh, it organizes them by this month, this year. Um, so we can go, let's say, to an early one, our batch reports. And this is the most recent one, but we can go back to any of previously run batches and take a look at them. So this one was run, um, actually that was today's batch. Let's go to an earlier time. Let's go to this one over here. And this ran, um, for instance, on the, the first, um, over a few minutes. Um, Max was the operator, and here's our, our data for this alarm, for this report. What else I want to show you here is you don't only have to use this, of course, through a standalone browser. It could be through a handheld device, or I'm going to kind of close the loop here and go back to our InTouch uh, application. And all I've done is I've taken the Internet Explorer ActiveX control and dropped it into InTouch. And let's um, go ahead and refresh our page. So this, I'm not even run, actually, let me go ahead and close Internet Explorer out on the outside. So this is now a window within of inside of InTouch. So an operator or anyone from a standalone browser can go and hit the web portal and for instance they want to go to their batch reports and maybe they don't want to look at the report for the last report, the batch last batch that ran. They would like to choose a batch which ran some other time. Maybe there was a quality issue they've been asked to investigate. So now through the web portal without any configuration a user can come in here and say I want to do a batch based report for a specific batch I've been asked to look at, not the last one. So I'm going to do an absolute batch ID and I'm going to look them up. And um, let's go find some batch in the past and I'll pick uh, anything here. Let's say batch 820-41 and whoops, no that's not it. <laughs> that was the auto generated one because our in touch application is still, I mean, is still auto generating them, but let's say batch 820.41, and we will generate that report now. 
and it's going to go out and extract the data for that specific batch. It figures out what the start and end time was for batch um, A20-41. That ran back in October, the start and the end time, and here's our alarm, I mean our batch information, our alarm and events, and we were able to go back in time, pick any other batch, and generate that report. And this can hold true for both batch-based information as well as time-based. You know, we just created this uh, report uh, this for the last two hours, this historian report, but I might choose to do a different date range. I don't want it for the last two hours, I want it for yesterday or another a a specific date and time. And with this I can go in here, um, let's say instead of uh, last so many hours, I can use a, a fixed time. And let's do, not relative, but fixed. And uh, actually let's do last, so we'll do the current one hour and uh, let's, so that'll be from 4 o'clock to 4.30 and generate that and uh, we now see all our data for the current hour populating this report. Okay, actually it looks like it brought up the last one. Oh, that was the last report. Okay, but yeah, so through this we can change any dates and times. We can com build our own completely interactive web report and with this, we have the ability to put our own web elements onto the uh, web page, our own date and time pickers. So for instance here, I have a date and time picker, maybe from 4 o'clock to, let's say, 4.15 today. I want to look at this data and say that. And what do I want to look at? I'm looking at my historian, but I really could look at anything here. Maybe these three vector tags. And I want to generate this report. And by doing that, we have now, we pass these parameters into our trend. We have some other objects, some raw data, some statistic tables, and here are our vector tags. Here's some, now there were only two tags, but there were two tags before, now there's three, and some raw data and our statistics. And without getting into the details of this, really this was just made by dropping in these different web elements. For instance, this is a a combo box and what do we want this combo box to show? We want it to show a tag list and we want to pass its data, get its data from my historian delta, delta data source. This for instance is a date and time picker, a timestamp picker. We've called it time picker start, time picker end and then simply in this little chart here I've referenced time picker start and time picker end. So that's really as easy as what it takes to compile a web-based report just using these elements and then tying them together by either tag names or date and time pickers. So with that I'd like to wrap up and uh, hopefully I've given you a good example of uh, a good cross-section of examples of the kind of reports and the kind of activities you could be doing in Dream Report to develop these very rich reports. Um, doesn't take a lot of effort. You didn't see me write or type out any select statements in SQL. Uh, in touch continues to generate the reports for us, so let's turn that off. Um, turn that off there. And really, just to show the ease in which uh, Dream Report has been uh, designed to really work very nicely with any control system, any HMI, in our case, specifically all the Wonderware products, to build these great looking, easy to generate reports. And with that, I would like to thank you for your time and. Um, Hope that uh, you start to investigate Dream Report. Maybe look at a demo uh, evaluation license and a, download a demo copy and really see what Dream Report can do for you and your uh, reporting needs. Thank you very much.